All right, so today I would like to make a quick kind of an introductory review or practice guide for a typical solo that many young trombone players, usually as beginners or sometimes even second year students, end up playing for their school solo ensemble contest. And this is a song that comes from the Trombone Gems, which is a collection of trombone works by uh, Vandercook, and it's the first in that series. It's called Ruby. And uh, many of you have probably already heard of it or are probably looking at this video because you are playing it and maybe want to hear a kind of a practice guide for it. I'm creating this practice guide because many of the students that I've taught on this uh, solo have looked online for recordings and many of the recordings are fellow beginners. And I think that's also great for my students and young students to also hear other students play the piece, but there aren't any recordings of professionals playing this. Now I'm not going to do this today with a piano accompaniment. This is only going to be the solo part. And these are just my thoughts and preparation points and bullet points for each section of this piece. So I hope you enjoy it and if you're not studying with anybody or taking lessons and just looking for a kind of a practice guide for this, I sure hope that this video helps. Okay, so the first part of this piece is marked andante, which means a slow walking tempo. We don't want to take it too slow. The style marking on this is cantabile, which means in a singing style. So although none of the notes in this movement are necessarily marked with a slur, we do want to play it in a connected fashion. One of the things I really like about the trombone gems and Vandercook's writing in general is that he's very specific on how he wants all of these pieces to be played. He puts the breath marks specifically where he wants them. He puts the accents and dynamics and all the other musical markings exactly the way he wants them to be played. And I believe it is our responsibility to play those. It makes the piece easier for a young player to approach if you focus on these other musical elements. But getting back to the legato and cantabile style of this first movement, make sure that everything is slurred. If your teacher or you know how to natural slur, by all means do so where it is appropriate. However, if natural slurring is a concept that you're unfamiliar with, or maybe you're not as effective with it as typical legato tonguing, you can also legato tongue this whole section. So with that, let me play it for you. Please be mindful of the dynamics and the style. So the second section of this piece is marked moderato, or a medium tempo. We have changed time signatures to 2-4 time, and the style marking that he has given us is boldly. So we want this to be played with a lot of confidence. Uh, although it is not necessarily a loud section, it just starts with mezzo forte and then goes to piano, the boldly, as I said before, means confidence. Don't play this very timid. You'll also notice a couple of patterns. For example, the first three measures can all be played in first position, which makes the first four measures very easy and approachable. However, when you get to the next group of measures, which has almost the identical melody but with different notes, we don't have a pattern to help us with that. So pay close attention. Make sure that all of your A's are in second position and C's are in third. Uh, going forward, there is a retardando, so we need to slow down just before the fermata. Make sure you take a nice big breath after that fermata. And then it is forte to the end. Uh, one last thing I would say besides being mindful of the dynamics is the style uh, within the movement has staccatos in it, which staccatos means separated. They don't necessarily mean short. 
So think about these notes being played to as long as you can, but still have the notes have a certain degree of separation. So focus more on the middle of the note instead of the beginning and the end. We still want to hear your best sound just separated. So with that, here's the moderato. The third section of this piece is marked trio. And I know a lot of young players might think, well, a trio means there are three people playing. Well, in this case, it just means that it's the third section of this piece. And we have a key change from the key of B-flat to the key of E-flat. So be mindful of all of the A's in this section. They are now in third position. And the style, for the most part, remains very consistent and almost the same as the, as the moderato. We also have a ritardando going into a fermata towards the end. Please make sure that you do slow down. Take a nice big breath after that, and it is forte after that fermata. And it ends with a decrescendo. So it's a little bit of a surprise. This is kind of an exciting section. You think it's going to end big, but it actually ends with a decrescendo. As always, be mindful of those dynamics. And here is the trio. For the last section, we have the DS and the coda. Now, of course, DS stands for Dal Segno. So looking at this piece, we have a sign or a musical symbol. We, we will go back to the beginning of the moderato, which also has that symbol. We will play the moderato again. And then one measure from the end of the moderato, we have the coda sign, which then takes us to the coda, which is marked allegro. So the beginning of this cut that I'm about to play will sound just like the moderato because it is the moderato. But at the end, the last note, which you would expect in the original moderato, was a dotted quarter note. It is now going to be an eighth note, which begins the allegro in the coda. And I'm going to do my very best to make sure that the allegro, the coda, is faster than the moderato. We want to end this piece exciting. It is forte all the way to the end. And there is a sforzando at the end, which is kind of like an exaggerated accent. So the last note, strong, all the way to the end, hold it longer than two uh, beats because it is a fermata. And that should conclude this. I hope that this video has helped. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And here is the last section of Ruby. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.